and Space Cats. It's me, Robin Bates, founder of Coaching for Geeks and Career XP Experts. In this video, I'm going to show you how to get a pay rise without fucking it up while still retaining the respect of your employer. Well, I'm amazed how I used to survive living in London. But I know how I did a bus pass and no tube pass. A very generous mum. Thanks, mum, if you're watching. A lot of ramen noodles. Because my salary certainly was barely enough to get by. And I never really believed I could ask for a raise. And way back before then, when I worked at Asda, there was no chance of a raise. It just didn't happen unless you climbed the corporate ladder. And I did get on the management training scheme. And I did realise that managing a large retail unit was the last thing I wanted to do. But oh, how that has changed. I've played the corporate game for a long, long time. and I know how it works. And you may not like some of the rules. So let's get on with it. Five steps to getting a pay rise. Step one, do your research. Research about money. First off, what state is the company in financially? Because look, if there's no money, there's no money. And if there's no money, you ain't going to be getting any money. So stop watching now. How much do people generally get paid for what you do? Is it more than what you're getting? Is it less than what you're getting? Is it about the same? This gives you the baseline for what your kind of role tends to get. Uh, and this will help you to establish if really if you should be getting more or if it's a bit of a bigger ask. There are loads of tools online to help with this. Or you can look at some job adverts and that will, will help you too. Step two to build your case. It's now up to you to build a really solid case as to why you should be paid more. And surprise, your work doesn't want to pay you any more money, uh, nor do they care how much your travel costs or that you're saving to buy a house or you're going to get married or you've got a poorly puppy and the vet bills are really expensive. They care about their bottom line. They care about what you do for them, what value you bring. So you've got to be the very best like no one ever was. I'm not saying you should go and become a Pokemon master. What I'm saying is you need to get good at your job. You need to be the best at your job. If Helen is better than you at your job, then why should you get a rise and instead of Helen? Well done, Helen. Look, you need to get training. You need to take on more responsibilities. You need to attend events and seminars, do online courses, do some job shadowing, uh, implement new ideas and solutions. But we're going to be launching CFG XP and also the Coaching for Geeks Academy in the next few months, which will help you with this. But in the meantime, check out Google Digital Garage or Udemy or Teachable, or the Khan Academy. There are loads of free, low-cost ways that you can do some, some CPD, some continuing professional development. There are loads of ways in which you can develop your skills and enhance what you do for your place of work. As you continue to build your case, how have you affected the bottom line? What work or clients have you sourced? What initiatives have you implemented to become more efficient? Cut wastage? What sales have you made? Uh, <clears throat> what have you done without being asked? What projects have you initiated? What ideas have you suggested or contributed? What responsibilities have you taken on? Uh, what have your appraisals or performance reviews said? Gather it up and build a case and don't be shy about why you are awesome. You have got to say, look, this is why I am worth more money to you. And if you don't build it, they ain't just going to give it to you. So get cracking. Okay, you've built your case. It's number three. Make an appointment. You know your boss best. So you know how to approach them, whether in person or by email. You know whether they like to know the detail or whether you like to keep it vague. So my preferred method is to say I'd like to book a meeting to discuss my salary. That way it's clear. They know what they're getting into. It's not a surprise. But if your boss doesn't like it that way, then just book a meeting. Don't book it for Monday morning. Avoid Friday afternoons. Wednesday afternoon tends to be quite good. It's that midweek day. If they've had their lunch, then they're probably a little bit more chilled than before lunch when they might be getting a bit hangry. Number four, it's practice. Okay, so it's time to practice stating your case for why you should be paid more money for what you do. So here's how it might go. Thank you for your time today. I really enjoy working for Coaching for Geeks. 
uh, as the founder and content creator. I've contributed a great deal during my time here and then you go into outlining your achievements over the past year, all the stuff that you prepped when you were building your case. I'm achieving a great deal in my role, delivering over and above the targets and taking on additional responsibilities such as similar roles earn X, which is Y percent more above my current salary. I'd like to discuss how we can close that gap. You need to tweak this, of course, for what you have or haven't achieved. That's just an example. Practice it in front of people. You want to have it memorised and be comfortable with it. Remember, the meeting might be interrupted. They might ask questions throughout. So it's no good just being able to reel it off. You've got to know it. You've got to understand it. And you've got to believe in it too. So it's number five. It's time for the meeting. Dress for it. Be smart. Uh, you know, dress, dress for the job you want, not the job you have. So be on time. Be polite. Make sure you've got a drink because you might be nervous. You might get the the dry throat and you don't want to be stumbling over your words because the opening is really important you need to nail the opening it will set you on the right track to, to, to delivering the rest of the content that you want to talk about so practice that go back go back to step four practice it practice it in front of someone practice it in front of friends practice it in front of me if you need to so open strongly and then focus on the value that you provide not on the personal elements, the commute time or the new family, leave emotion out of it. Unless it's a mom and pop business, then you might be able to use that as a bit of leverage. Remember, the people may care, but ultimately the business doesn't. The corporation does not. So state your case and then shut the fuck up. Silence is really powerful. Let them think about it. Let them process it. Give them some time to respond. And they may ask some questions. Listen carefully to what they are asking and then answer them. Make sure you answer the question that is being asked. Chances are you're not going to get an answer immediately. There'll be a process to follow. It may need to go to HR. It might need to go up to the board for a decision. But if you do, if they say, yes, I will give you a pay rise, follow it up immediately with an email you need to get this in writing and you need to get this in writing now so follow it up with an email anything agreed verbally get it in writing immediately you don't want to get alan partridge and have them die on you look it's been 21 years if you haven't watched i'm alan partridge yet that's on you so there we have it five steps to uh ah but what if they say no <sighs> okay so there is a chance that they're going to say no this is an opportunity. Ask what would need to be different before they could say yes. Ask what you'd need to do before they could say yes. Find out maybe if you could work from home some days, save some money on your commute. See if there's any training that you can get out of them. Look, I once got five grand's worth of training out of a company because there was no money for pay rises, but there was a huge training budget, so I took advantage of it. That's how I've ended up doing what I do now. Do not say, pay me more or I'll leave. It's a dick move. It really is. It's one that I have seen work once, but no one respected them after that, and they'd really cock-blocked their own progression. Personally, my response to that would be, well, in that case, perhaps you should begin exploring other opportunities. That would be my response. And if I was feeling really dickish, I would say, in that case, here's my offer and write a great big zero on a piece of paper and slowly slide it across the table towards them whilst looking them in the eye. Five steps to getting a pay rise in one way not to. Two quick points. In the UK, you cannot be fired for asking for a pay rise. However, in the States, well, you can be fired for anything, can't you? So you need to choose your battles carefully. So go get them, Tiger. So have you ever asked for a pay rise? How did it go? Let me know in the comments below and we'll see you next time.